Hi. Uh, once again, today, welcome to a devotional podcast with Dr. Jacob Al. Uh, we are continuing our series on naked and not ashamed. Naked and not ashamed. Uh, enjoying sexual intimacy in uh, Christian marriage uh, couples. Uh, and we have been on this series for some time now. And we have, today we're going to be looking at uh, phase three of the arousal process. And this is the epic of the arrival uh, arousal process in love making and it's called orgasm uh, again um it is important to put this whole series in perspective because i i know talking sex about sex openly is is something uh, that is frowned at and even in in christian uh, perspective in circles. Uh, but we have taken this bold initiative uh, as a result of uh, the lack of knowledge in this area that has caused a lot of God's people to perish and marriages to perish uh, for that sake. Uh, for, for, for that reason, uh, we have been led to go on this series on uh, sexual intimacy in Christian marriages uh, that has caught up so well, and uh, uh, I just looked at uh, a day before some of my download uh, statistics, and uh, uh, for the past week, uh, there were weeks that it had have uh, five hundred thousand view views, uh, uh, and 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 some, uh, you know, uh, not five hundred thousand, but five hundred views. Uh, but there was one day in the week that it had uh, more than a, a thousand views. And these are all uh, countries outside the U.S. Uh, that are viewing these, downloading these videos and, and, and viewing them. Uh, and so I, I, I just thank the Lord that at least we have this godly information concerning sex balanced scriptural information concerning text, sex are out there for people who just are so uh, devastated by this whole issue of sex uh, in marriage. And I rightly understand that it is not a topic that a pastor can teach from the pulpit or even in Sunday school and even sometimes within cell, cell groups, they, they find it difficult, either because the, the correct scriptural knowledge on this is, is lacking, or people just don't have the courage. They think that sex is a private thing and uh, should not be talked about. And that is where the enemy has taken advantage and sort of uh, used that lack of knowledge to destroy a lot of marriages and have wrecked a lot of faith and caused spiritual problems as a result of this sexual problem. So we have been granted the opportunity to do this because I happen to have this uh, uh, test book that I use for my PhD in psychology uh, that talked, that gave a lot of uh, um, material on this issue, a balanced biblical view on this issue. And so I felt it was necessary to share it with the body of Christ. So today we are on phase three and uh, it, it, it's orgasm. Uh, that is, and that will be episode 44. Now, for some people, they probably have never heard of this word orgasm and they would not know what it means. So, uh, uh, but uh, those of you who uh, have uh, aware of this, at least you would get more knowledge about that and you would get to understand what it's all about. So as usual, we will start with a scripture uh, from Songs of Solomon, uh, verses one, uh, uh, chapter one, verses two. Songs of Solomon, uh, one, two, it says, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. 
Your love is more delightful than wine. Songs of Solomon uh, 1, uh, chapter 1, verses 2. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Your love is more delightful than wine. So you read this verse and you wonder, uh, how can such a verse be part of the Bible? But that's exactly what it is. The whole book of Songs of Solomon is devoted to uh, uh, sex and love making in the context of uh, a godly Christian, uh, godly Christian marriage or biblical marriage. Uh, and so uh, we should not be ashamed or feel shy or hide this knowledge uh, from believers. After all, as I have said throughout the series, sex was created by God as a gift and given as a, a gift to marriage couples. And so it should not be something that we should allow the world to hijack and uh, downgrade it and make it filthy. And then we then are not able to talk about it. So uh, today we're looking at uh, orgasm is the most, I would say, is the uh, uh, peak of the love making process. This is what we call the plateau. If you're looking at a mountain, this is just the top out there, cloud nine. It's That is where the goal is, uh, orgasm, uh, the ultimate pleasure in the act of love making. Uh, and so uh, it, it's strange that, and from surveys, uh, some Christian women have, confess that they've been in marriage for 20 years and they can't even remember the last time they ever had orgasm or they even don't even know what this whole word orgasm means. So let's go to it. The word orgasm comes from the Greek word orgy, meaning excitement. Okay. So the woman is described as experiencing a, a, a momentary sensation of suspension following uh, by a burning sensation in the pineal uh, area that spreads throughout her body. The woman then experiences rhythmic contractions of her lower third of her vaginal region. Now, approximately three to ten contractions may take place over a few seconds, increasing the intensity of the physical sensation is possible when she urges herself to strengthen her pelvic muscle contraction while joining her husband's pelvic movement, letting herself go and searching uh, uh, searching for release. Okay, so uh, it's an intense moment of excitement when the woman gets to this stage, and it is. It is an amazing stage in the act of uh, love making that, unfortunately, most men invariably and unintentionally deny our wives from reaching this stage in the sex in the act of uh, sexual uh, intercourse. Now, there are a few myths that I need to uh, dismantle on this. And that has hurt a lot of Christians, and especially Christian women, who have felt that if they let themselves go in this act of sexual and love making, and they 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 let themselves go to gain an orgasm, then the the husband will see them as being sexual sex addicts, and so. The women try themselves, even when they are pleasurized in this act, they restrain and constrain themselves from releasing themselves to fully embrace and enjoy uh, this uh, act of sexual intercourse. And so uh, with, the, with the intention of not making their husbands feel that uh, they, 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 they love sex and so Probably they are perverse and sexual addicts. This could not be further from the truth. Ladies, listen. Don't allow these myths to hinder you from releasing yourself to enjoy the maximum pleasure in the act 
of uh, 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 love making. God created it for you. You have every right to enjoy it. You are not just a, 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 a machine that is to pleasurize your husband, and then you go and you just suffer all day or week or months, or even throughout the year or throughout the marriage. That is not right. It's not scriptural. You see, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. Who is talking here? That's the Shunammite woman. She was not ashamed of declaring to the people of Israel the love-making acts, Solomon and the Shunammite woman. And so it is important that we, under, we, we as women, you understand this. It is God's purpose and intention that you enjoy every act, act as aspect of the 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 the, the, the for love making uh, 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 the, the encounter. Don't restrict and constrain yourself to a point that you you don't want to even gain orgasm. You don't want to release yourself. You don't want to let go that you can enjoy this intense pleasure just because you fear that your husband may think that you are a sex pervert or you are addicted to sex. That could not be further. And if your husband has ever said that to you, uh, she, he, he, you, you, you need to sit him down and let him know you will not take that from him. Because the fact is that he's a Shunammite woman. If you read the book of Songs of Solomon, is the wife who is broadcasting and making all these wonderful comments about the act of sex in, 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 in displayed in, in, in Songs of Solomon. And, and so I don't see why you think that as a godly woman, you should not enjoy sexual uh, encounters with your husband. Now, you deny yourself of this pleasure and then you burn within you and this forces you to look at younger men or other men outside your marriage. And, and you, you may not go to the extent of lusting after them to a point where you get them on bed, but the fact that you perceive it in your mind and in your heart, you have already crossed the line. And that is because you have denied yourself of the pleasure of getting to the pivot, the climax in the act of sex and love making with your sis, with your man. The Bible says that you should enjoy from your sis. Enjoy from your cooler or in other words, enjoy from your well, your water well. The sis was a dugout cyst was where they had good cool water that they, they used in the early days, biblical times. And Proverbs tells men not to, 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 to make sure they enjoy the water from their cyst proverbially, which means you enjoy the, 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 your wife, that you will not have any reason to look at anybody else's cyst. So coming back to this uh, act of uh, um, uh, orgasm uh, by the woman, it is, it, is, it is pivotal that the woman should understand that you have every release, reason to release yourself, take off all those myths and things that hinder you, because you have to remember your sexual intercourse and play, everything takes place in your brains. Because there are these signals in your brains that releases a lot of the hormones and the estrogens that makes the act of love making to be possible. And so when you confuse yourself and you harbor these uh, uh, things in your mind that, oh, I, I don't want to let loose myself to even yell or scream or make noise to make, to make my wife, my, my husband think that I'm enjoying it so much that he may think that I'm a sex addict. Take that from your mind. And that is why even in a home where you have kids, you should make sure that this is done in a very private place. 
There must be privacy for this. So nothing will make you think, oh, maybe I'm so loud that people outside, my children in the next bedroom may hear me screaming and making noise during this act. You have to be able to let yourself loose and go. When you are in a conducive place where you are having this act of sexual intercourse in a very private place, you should allow yourself loose and enjoy every second of it. So as it, is, it is said here, it is possible that the, during the act of orgasm, there are redeeming contractions that takes place over a few seconds, and it increases in intensity of physical sensation. That, 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 that just flashes through the woman's whole body. You get muscle contractions, while joining her husband's pelvic movement, letting herself go and searching for release. Now, after her movements, her partner's uh, stimulation and her own mental concentration combines, she reaches the climax of her experience, often as an emotional, often an emotional mountain, mountain top experience an emotional mountaintop experience when the rest of the world resides and stands still. So it, it, it is exciting. And I, I'm telling you, if you are a woman and you haven't gone, re reached this stage in your, in your love making, it doesn't matter how many years you, you need to, to let go and, and get your husband to listen to the past series the, the arousal stage, as we have come to this point, you, you need to let him listen to it and follow these steps to get you to have this encounter. It's just not, your role is just not to be uh, becoming pregnant and, 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 and delivering the babies. You have to enjoy it to, to, for it to get to that stage. If even you have finished delivering the babies, you should you should still you still have the capacity to be able to enjoy. This is what spices up the marriage and makes you committed, dedicated to one another. Because why? You get all your satisfaction from one another. It's a mountaintop experience where it looks for a moment, the whole world stands still and you are just at the peak of this excitement. How often many women need this? I mean, the lack of this, this type of excitement in a woman's marriage can be so boring. And you find the marriage life so disinterested. But if once a while you can bring yourself in the act of sexual intercourse to reach this stage, it's blissful. Especially when God is in it and you are both doing this as an honor to Christ and respecting and pursuing the delight of one another. So it is a spectacular feeling best described as ecstasy. <coughs> so orgasm is a spectacular feeling best described as ecstasy. Those are the words that is being used here by Dr. Ed Huit to describe this whole issue of orgasm. Please, I encourage you, if you're a woman and you have never ever gone through this in your act of sexual play, please, you deserve it. Let your husband understand that you refuse to be a punching bag or a sex machine for him. You have every right to enjoy sex to the fullest. That is what God intended it to be. And he dare not call you a sex pervert or you are a sex addict. Then when he does that, refer him to the Shunammite woman in Songs of Solomon. She's excited and she's expressing how much she's enjoying her lover. Said, let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth. That's the Shunammite woman talking. That is the wife of a married woman, a Christian man talking. And so you have, you can be a Proverb 31 
woman. And in, in fact, if you are proved 31 woman and you don't enjoy this, you, you haven't reached this stage yet, then I want you to understand that there is a part of you that is not experiencing the spiritual bliss that you are supposed to experience even in the act of sexual intercourse. You say, hey, 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 Pastor Jacob, you're going too far with this. I'm not going too far. It's scriptural. If Christ can compare his relationship with the church and the excitement he gets from the church with the act of sexual intercourse, then who are we to say that we can deny each other of this encounter when Christ is saying that just as the church, he, 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 he just as he loves the church, that is the same way we ought to love our spouse and be willing to die for our spouses. And so I, I just want to dismantle every myth around this whole thing about women just lying down and just satisfying their husbands and letting them go without having any any enjoyment in this. You have every right to demand that. If you have never experienced this encounter, you need to ask, sit your woman, man down and go through this, this uh, uh, podcast with him and get him to do the, take the steps that will bring you to that climax. And it's the same way as women. No, sometimes it's just that we, we, we probably don't allow men to. So I'm not just bashing the, the men uh, on behalf of the women today, it, it must be. It, it's an act of mutual understanding, an act of satisfying each other, which is should be a clear understanding. Women are sometimes unsure if they have experienced an orgasm. They are not even sometimes sure. If you experience involuntary contraction of your vaginal and later feel calm and physically satisfied, you have experienced an orgasm, even if it is a weak one. So some orgasms, some women's orgasms are very vigorous. They express themselves in diverse ways, and they can have this series of orgasms that for, for, for a period of time, probably they can have 10 orgasms in one act of foreplay. And, 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 and some women's experience are very, very, very mild. They have this deep sense of excitement, but it's so mild that at the end of the day, it's not as vigorous. They don't scream. They don't yell. They don't have this type of convulsions that some women will have. In fact, in orgas orgasmic states, some women will convulse. The, the way their whole body responds to this organic, uh, orgasm, or, orgasmic uh, display would be as if their bodies are being convulsed. And some women have it very mild. They don't experience this type of vigorous screaming and yelling and excitement. They don't, ex but it's mild. But they have this deep sense of satisfaction, and they you find them gasping and holding tight to their to their husbands. If you have that experience as a that's orgasm. It's just that your type of orgasm is not as wild as others are. But that doesn't mean you haven't gained orgasm. You just have to understand that. So the man's orgasm is characterized by involuntary muscle contraction with sensation explicitly centered on the penis, uh, postrate, postate, and the seminal vessels. When, 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 when seminal vessels, when he expels the semen, his orgasm is complete. So for, for, for men, to be honest with you, um, <laughs> our form of orgasm, it's, it, it's very short. And it, it depends on the man. You need to master this act in a way that your orgasm could be a little prolonged. Because you need to understand, with men, it is during the process of ejaculation, pushing out the semen from your prostate area, seminal area through the prostate glands, in through your penis, into the woman, into your wife, those that the, the sensation of, of, of the movement of these semen during the process of ejaculation is what gives you the most excitements. So if you 
have been able to time yourself well to prolong these this this movement you 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 will be in a position to enjoy the excitement for a protracted period of time and not just come out boom you spew spew your spams into her and that's it you are lying down exhausted tired and then you get off your woman you are snoring and then she then is now suffering because she had just been excited her excitement has just begun and that is why uh, as men we we want to be careful during the the first second phases we have discussed this find a technique a way that you can prolong the act of foreplay and prolong with hold your ejaculation to a point that you could even both of you could gain orgasm at the same time it's blissful at that but just understand in the act of gaining orgasm with your spouse, you 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 spew out your sperms into her, and that ends your your orgasm. But you have to understand that your wife will still be in the position to gain many more orgasms. So don't, when you ejaculate, don't just stop that act and get off her and lie down and start snoring. She may still be in the position to gain a three to four or five more orgasms. Uh, even after you have ejaculated, don't be quick to push off, to take off your uh, penis from her and allow her to just lie there and be suffering. At this point, you are able to you say, well, well, when I ejaculate, the whole thing comes down. And I mean, what do you want? To, what do I do next, Pastor Jacob? What do you want me to do? You can do a lot. Because I believe me, it, it, yes, it is true that once you ejaculate, the erection will probably come down. But you have to, don't just quickly withdraw from her. Leave it in her and use your fingers to begin to caress the area of her clitoris, even as your an erected penis is still in her. There's a lot you can be doing with your fingers around her clitoris that will allow her to continue to gain orgasm. Let more, more one or two or three more orgasms comes before she becomes exhausted and ends. And this is the area that most men don't get it. And they allow their women to suffer after they have ejaculated. That's the end of the show. They leave everything and they begin to snore. You have just arisen. You have just brought up the excitement of the woman. And now you, you just ejaculate and then you leave her to suffer. Then what excites her next time you want to have sexual intercourse with her? Because she knows that that is the same way it's going to end. So there are a few things that as a man you can do to prolong your, your, your orgasm. If you want to increase the intensity of your orgasm, there are five things you can do. Number one, you should wait at least 24 hours after your last orgasm to allow your body to store more seminal fluids. So as I mentioned, is the seminal is the sperms of the man passing through the seminal area through the prostate to the penis into the woman? That whole process is what makes the, the, the your orgasm exciting. And so, if you have the capacity to have more fluid seminal fluid in you, then the longer you'll be able to prolong uh, your orgasm. So don't don't be so it, it is said that biologically it will take 24 hours to fill up for the seminal area seminal area to be filled again that will have enough semen for the next intercourse. So if you are a man that just want to have it almost nonstop three days three times a day, 
then you 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 can be sure that you will have certain encounters where uh, you you just may not get, have enough semen to 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 excite and to to bring the orgasm as it should. So you you give yourself the, give the body twenty four hours to rest and for the semen to be replenished. It's very important. Number two, allow about twenty minutes for the penis to remain erect during foreplay and excitement. So as we looked at the first, second phase of arousal, we, we, we did mention this. Uh, sometimes we men, we are so quick to insert. We are so quick. All our mind, all what we think about is the insertion. And when you do that, you don't allow the erection to last for some time. Then uh, you, you, you ejaculate sooner than, than expected. So allow yourself during the foreplay. And, and there, are, there are things that you can do to prolong that. We talked about that. When you sense you have the edge to come, you can withdraw or withdraw your penis from any type of touch and or sensation. Then you can relax and then come back again. And, and, and you can have a, a whole lot of things that you can do and even for people who have erectile dysfunction, we'll be discussing it. Some of the things that you can do to prevent you from coming prematurely and to help you prolong uh, the, 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 the whole ejaculation. And number three, by seeing and feeling your wife's aesthetic response to your skilled and knowledgeable physical stimulation, you can increase the level of your imagination. So this is the thing. I have said this very often. Listen, as a man, if you make it your goal to bring excitement to your wife during sexual intercourse, believe me, you yourself will gain the benefit. When you make it your goal to give your wife maximum satisfaction see, during sexual intercourse, you get the benefit. Because the fact is this, when you skillfully spend the time patiently, work your wife to an orgasmic state, guess what? As she expresses herself in the, ga in the, in the gaps and the meons and the cry and, and the convulsion of her body uh, being stimulated by your touch and your skillful act of sexual play foreplay, you 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 gain you you begin your body would naturally react to what you see. But remember, for men, we are very visual, and, and so when you are able to get your wife to a point that she's experiencing this ecstatic display of excitement, it affects you. Naturally, your body would re respond to what your eyes are seeing. And, and so when you are selfish and you just want to jump on her and get it done and wake up, you are denying yourself a lot of pleasure that you could both enjoy. So please, that's one of the things that you can do. Just make it your goal. Hey, forget of just jumping into her but take time to witness. Imagine how much you want to see her being pleasurized. And when you do that, you yourself invariably will be pressurized. As orgasm uh, contracts the muscles in your anal sphincter, spe make your trust more forceful. As uh, 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 uh. so, so, so the number four is. Uh, contracting, contract the muscles in your anal spray. They, they, so, so this is the thing. There is a muscle in your anal, anal area that controls uh, uh, a, a lot of things with regards to how uh, even uh, you can hold up your urine or even uh, the semen from, from, from flowing. It, it is a muscle that is, if you exercise it, and there is the Kegel exercise that is used for people who have just done prostate uh, uh, surgery, rex, rex, prostrectomy, and it, it helps them keep their urine not 
flowing consistently, those same exercises can be used to hold, to help you prolong your ejaculation. And we will get to these details in later episodes. So you can do a lot with your the contraction of that muscle in your anal, anal area in the, in the time, in the period of sexual uh, intercourse. It is a trick that you need, you want to practice and practice it in such a way that you will be able to prolong uh, your your the, your erection and obviously hey, that will help with the um, with with the prolonging of your uh, 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 orgasm as well. Number five, uh, make your trust more uh, forceful as you orgasm, you gain orgasm. So. Um, so at the point you would realize that, okay, look, I feel that I'm coming. And if you have reached the climax, your wife has gained orgasm or she's about to gain, this is when you don't slow down. You, in, 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 in increasing the rhythm of your trust to match with the excitement of your wife, you are likely to meet at a point where you both will gain orgasm, and it's a it's a blissful thing to be whole. You 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 will love it if if you can time yourselves and get this thing done uh, together. So as a result of these few seconds of intense feeling known as orgasm, both husband and wives will experience various muscular reactions and facial expressions. In addition, both of them usually grip each other tightly as they move in rhythm. It's, it's powerful. It's a powerful, 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 powerful bond of, 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 of sexual uh, relationships in, in when when you when when you your I'm telling you your love play and will never be boring if you if you learn to do this in a way that um, you all will, will 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 have an understanding. So although men and women may be unaware of their muscular effect during orgasm, the next day they almost always complain of pain, especially in uh, the back and their tides. So that that sort of will happen. I mean, look, hey, the, the act of foreplay and the encounter in the area of lovemaking, it is, it's, it's not an, it, 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 it is said that the period of, the time, the time, the 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 the, the, the times that your muscles goes through contract constr- constructions contractions in in this whole act, it, it's it's just like an athlete who is running a four hundred meter race. <coughs> that is the amount of energy you exert in this whole act to the point of orgasm that you would realize that, hey, you may not notice it, but often if you really, really have good time together as a couple, always the following day, you will sense that. You will see it in the showing up in the in the type of uh, sort of experience that you gain in your thighs and your muscles uh, the following day. Uh, he, the man should begin manual stimulation of the clitorious areas as soon as the husband has finished ejaculate. And this is what that's this is what I, I spoke of uh, from the beginning. Uh, uh, don't just end things. Don't just stop things. It is important you understand that you need to uh, help your wife experience this repeated orgasms as women can have. It is possible. But it all depends on you, the husband. You ought to understand that you have the responsibility to not just quit after you are done. It is your responsibility to keep the momentum going, to enable her to gain more and more and more of the orgasms as she is able to gain. Women are capable of gaining. So since the whole point of sexual relationship is to please each other, she should not have to ask for this. Having to ask for something 
for some for oneself is not desirable. Thus, it is not desirable to 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 change the pace. The husband should have the natural desire to provide every pleasure he can to the wife. Okay? So when you do that, the wife may be extremely pleased by the constant uh, stimulation. So uh, it, it is not for the wife to ask that, hey, honey, when, when you are done, you often leave me hanging. You need to continue. You don't have to allow your, as a man, you should have, you should notice that because the whole act, as the scripture says, is for the mutual benefit and the mutual pleasure of both of you. And so most Christian marriages, the problem is that there is this feeling that, hey, it is the woman's responsibility to just lie down and satisfy the husband. And so the women are given the short change when it comes to sexual intimacy. But that is not what scripture says. Paul makes it clear in 1 Corinthians chapter 7 that you your, your bodies are for each other. And so it is it is not just for you, the man, to keep enjoying, and you give the woman, you short secure the woman. You need to continue to a point that. She doesn't have to ask for it. You need to gain this understanding that you voluntarily do it. And when she realizes that it is your desire to keep her pleasurized, guess what? You will also be pleasurized. So it may be a goal for lovers or couples to achieve orgasm uh, instant, simultaneously, but it is not nearly as important as aiming for mutual enjoyment. And, and there's nothing wrong. I mean, look, if you make it your goal to do it, to meet to meet simultaneously, uh, it is epic. It is blissful. I mean, if if you, it needs to, to, you need to time each other. You need to be patient for that to happen. And if you make it your goal to make it happen each time you have an encounter, it, it is wonderful. It, it will never, you will never be bored. And you would not have the need to look elsewhere. You don't have the need to have to look for pornography or look for young women out there or cheat or swell your marital bed. Because why? You are giving each other the exact thing that you will crave from another person. And that is the whole thing. That is what the Bible clearly teaches. You need to be able to enjoy one another to a point that you have no need of looking elsewhere. Why? Because you both have the very things that you look elsewhere for. And that is why I say that sexual problems can easily evolve into spiritual problems when they are not taken care of. But God has given you the tools and the enablement to be able to enjoy each other that you would not need to look elsewhere. And that is the goal of this whole series on sexual intimacy, that Christian men and women will enjoy each other so much so that they will have no need to look elsewhere to satisfy themselves sexually. Because God has given you everything that you need in a man in your husband. And God has given you, the man, everything that you need in a woman, in your wife. So why look elsewhere when it's just the lack of knowledge that makes you think that somebody else can satisfy you better than your spouse? And that is where it runs people into problems and eventually, eventually destroys the marriage and destroys one walk with Christ. So I hope this information that has been provided today is sufficient for you to invest time and practice in this, making it your goal to satisfy each other that you will have no need to look elsewhere in the context of your marriage. Thank you for taking time to listen to today's devotional podcast.
Now, as I do, as I said over and over, this perfect union can only happen when you are both in Christ and you understand Christ's relationship to the church. Then you can bring it to your relationship with one another. So if you do not know Christ, please, it takes less than one billion for a second for you both to receive Christ and then ask God to help you become intentional in the area of satisfying each other when it comes to sexual intimacy. Shall we pray? My Lord and Savior Jesus, thank you for your word today. Come into my heart. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe you died on the cross to set me free. And whom the Son shall set free shall free, be free indeed. I thank you. And I thank you for opening my eyes to these things that I have hitherto not been privy of. Thank you. Any impediments in my relationship with my spouse, I come against it in Jesus' name. Help us enjoy each other that we will have no need to look elsewhere. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Beloved, if you have said this prayer, understand this. Uh, the Lord is with you. and He's blessed you and made you what you ought to be. You want to enjoy each other and be sure that you actually love each other. You enjoy each other in every form. I, I, I have prayed for God's blessings as usual. Please it, it, click on the link, on uh, the red link. If you are looking at or uh, watching this on YouTube, to, to, to click on the link to subscribe so that next series you'll get an alert to. Thank you for taking time to listen to today's devotional podcast. God bless. Bye.